we know you're French Canadian, and what we get here from 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 Canadian culture is somehow confusing. We know about Neil Young, Johnny Mitchell, and the Ben, at least my generation, and then Celine Dion. We know that James Cameron is Canadian, and Brian Williams, uh, and uh, but. Somehow you're different because camp doesn't work. Okay. Uh, Canadian culture, at least the Canadian culture that comes to us, has this tendency of becoming a U.S. American culture very quickly. And uh, my question: Could you tell us what background you come from? Uh, how come? The, the, the environment in which you shot the film is new to us, but also the, your selection of characters looks uh, unorthodox, let's put it this way. So where do you come from? What's your background? What's your cultural background? Sorry. I know that your hometown is the town that, in which yeah. you made the movie. Well, um, first of all, thank you for being, for being here. Um, I think my background, I'm basically not a film school and movie goer cultures. I used to work at Cinematheque for years in Montreal, uh, watching, being, basically being paid to watch films all the time. And then the mic kind of flew. Um, as a cultural background, yes, I'm from Quebec, so I'm what they call French Canadian. Um, is it working? Yes, okay. Because I, I heard my voice sometime and I lose it, so that's why. Um, culturally, the film was shot in uh, this small town called Lévis, near Quebec City, on the south shore of uh, the uh, mighty St. Lawrence River. Um, I grew up in this town. I was born there, near the shipyard that we uh, can see in the film. Um, my grandfather used to work as a seafarer for years. And after he retired from the boat, he used to work there at the shipyard. So I have some Sorry, some sort of a highly personal connection to this shipyard. Um, that's probably where the inspiration comes from, first and foremost. This being had to my sort of uh, almost spiritual relation to the St. Lawrence River, which is really, really, really beautiful and really, like historically, have a lot of meaning because that's the way that the Europeans went into Canada and you know, in Abit Canada and everything. So it's it's charged with a lot of history and cultural meaning, and yet it's really, really beautiful. Uh, what you portray here is uh, the two, two things fascinate me. One is this evocation of a proletarian culture. Mm -hmm. I know that uh, the, the, the actor that plays uh, Fanny is not an actor, she's a car mechanic. She was trained as a car mechanic. She's now an actress, but uh, she was trained as a car mechanic in a small town. And she's between two films. She's now working in a hospital, taking care of elder people. So. And besides everything, the the, the abstract the capitalist capitalist world in which we we all try to cope these days. I mean, this story is uh, we've seen it before. What is new here? What I see, I detect as a as a as a really original idea is a, the. Ex the exploration of uh, solidarity between between two workers and the way it's uh, expressing solidarity in uh, situations of desperation, it's a really hard job. Mm -hmm. Where did you get the idea to go into this territory, which is, must be, from, from the cinematographic point of view, one of the most difficult issues to deal with in well, I think that was, while I was writing this film, at some point I had to, of course, take a few decisions about what I wanted to say. And I sort of knew that I had this story of this uh, foreigners coming to Canada, but not as an immigrant, not as a refugee, just a, as a guy who just basically want to get the hell out there. Um, this gave me the um, an opportunity to tell things about the country. Basically, it was looking at this... Uh, at Canada, through, sort of through the eyes of these foreigners. And while I was writing, I had this character of Fanny who's coming at some point. It was, it actually, it was there really, really early in the script writing, but the relation, I had to fix something, and I knew that there was something about exactly those new working 
this new working class, basically, uh, meeting. And I knew that, um, I sort of feel that the question behind all of this is if you put two, let's say, poor people, one from foreign country and one from, from Canada, are they getting along? Will they, will they stand together? Or will they just basically get, uh, get tear apart by the money, by, you know, the, this kind of huge system where nobody is responsible for nothing, basically? Uh, what, what you did here was, was a low budget movie, right? In, in terms of production, I think it's, what was it, 800,000 euros? Yeah, around that one. How common is that in Canada? I mean, sort of. Uh, what is your what is your slot in Canadian cinematography? Well, uh, th this this film was financed by government agency, both Canada and Quebec government, uh, in a program called Independent Film, which is basically uh, a, a polite word to say cheap film. Um, but you have all the control that you need uh, throughout the you know the the script writing the the the. the the casting process, the, you, you have the final cut and everything, which is not always the case on bigger budget film, where basically the producer owns the final cut, and ultimately it's the distributor who can say how the film will, will be ended. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if this was exactly the question, but it's... Uh, well, I mean, I, I have a follow-up. Jeremy Jernik yesterday uh, complained that already in the 70s, the trend of populist movies started to take over uh, every other project. And he said not just him and the alternative directors from, from the 70s had problems, but Scorsese mm -hmm. didn't know what to do for a few years because uh, uh, Spielberg and Lucas took yeah, over just the market. Remember. But now what we see in Italy, let's say, is a revival of uh, uh, social yes. m movies that you can put in the context of social uh, realism or Italian neorealism. The same is happening in France to a certain yes. uh, uh, Germany, <coughs> I think it's also <coughs> the ideas. And I wonder, is, is this true for, for the Americas also? I mean, there was this revival with, with the Sundance Festival, but then it became... Well, Sundance became sort of, sort of uh, more and more moved toward this happy ending uh, independent film, like Little Miss Sunshine kind of film, which is, which is fair enough, which is, which is okay, you know, but it's just that uh, I think that there's a lot of new filmmakers uh, in Canada and in the States that sort of jump in this sort of, um, I don't really like to call it social cinema, but in a sense it is what it is, you know, it's really rooted in, 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 a, in a community, kind of grounded, kind of in face with the political feeling of the moment in, a, in the country where we live in. It's true that in Quebec we have this chance of um, having this uh, government agency which, is, which really help uh, people to make the film as they like it. They're really supportive. All that is really fragile though because there's a lot of people contesting uh, the fact that culture have to be uh, uh, subsidized by the government. Um, in terms of the America in general, I think that uh, North America in general, I think that there's a lot of American filmmaker as well as probably a lot of English Canadian filmmaker and I have to say shamefully that I don't really know those guys. But I think there's a lot of those film of young filmmaker or, or less younger that try through the um, this new way of making film, you know, digital camera, stuff like that, really independent DIY kind of filmmaking. Uh, they're more and more getting back to the track of small story grounded and rooted with uh, <coughs> community, and local and real people, non-actor trend. It's kind of big also, you know, just... Uh, and the story is ideal to produce an ideological <coughs> movie, a political program, something with a very explicit message. You avoided that. Was it by, 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 was it your decision, I will not do a, a movie that's a political program? And was it difficult to avoid the trap of uh, preaching to the choir and propose a solution which you don't? Uh, no, well, well, it's difficult not to do it because it's kind of the obvious, uh, we're kind of, uh, as a spectator, you're kind of trained to receive a film that will 
answer every question that are in the, 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 the movie. But uh, I knew really soon, also as a spectator, for, uh, first and foremost, that I don't want to be told what to think about the situation. And I love political movie, but sometimes they can really, really, really piss me off because it's exactly the preaching to the choir. They're telling you, this is the bad guys, this is the good guys. And I sort of strongly believe that there's no real bad guys and good guys in life, you know. They're just people who just try to get through life. And so that's something that I try to put in the film. And um, where I was going with this, sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> was it difficult Short to night. avoid, uh, to, to do this, to, to, to avoid the trap? Well, it's difficult to write, <coughs> basically, you know. So yes, there, there, there was this temptation at some point to give to the, the to the spectator this, not an happy ending, but this, let's say this um, ending that will uplift them, that telling there is hope, there is, you know, good feeling like that, or to pinpoint who's really the bad guy in the story. And I try that as much as I can to avoid that from the beginning, actually. Um, you know, I love film by I don't know, people like Ken Loach or the Darden Brothers are for me, you know, great inspiration. And I think that uh, you were talking about, you know, Italian neorealism, neo which is sort of trying to work in this ethical path of there is no real good guys and bad guys. There are just people trying to get through things. So yes, it was uh, from sort from the start something that I tried to do. It wasn't easy to achieve, of course, but, um, you know, I, do my, I did my best. And you did a very good job. <coughs> so as, as an introduction to the discussion, I think this is enough now. I leave the floor to you, and please shoot the questions. Yeah, I, I would like to ask you, I really like your movie, but I have a question. At the end, Troy is a victim. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was wondering, you already mentioned some different, and I'm not talking about a happy, cheap happy ending, but about empowering Troy. To, to be uh, better in his struggle? I thought about that, and in some version, it, it exists in some version on paper, I said. Um, but somehow, I feel that it was kind of uh, almost contrived to go into this direction. That this very, I, I wouldn't say dramatic, but almost you know, sad ending was the natural ending of this story. The, the, it is the way, the only way that it could finish, really, if I want to get fair with my character and my subject. You know, it's just, at some point, and at some point as a filmmaker also, you're, you're basically making a decision <laughs> and you have to choose. And I was really under the impression, I still, I'm still under the impression that it's, it was the only possible logical uh, ending with this big economical scam that was the sort of going on in the background of the film. Okay, let's go ahead. I really liked uh, the fact that he, was, he wasn't portrayed as a hero, because usually, in, I mean, mo mainstream movies, if you get such a character, he gets, at some point, he becomes a hero, and you know, mm -hmm. he has all the answers how to do things, but here his helpless, helplessness was shown. And it was really, I mean, I really liked it. Yeah, well, thank you. Uh, as I said, you know, I, I, I don't like to, to say there, there's good guys and bad guys. And so if you, you, you sort of uh, take the decision to say that there's people, uh, there's no bad guys, well, there's no saint neither. You know, they're just, Traoré, it's, it's uh, I, we had a discussion yesterday, I think, about the fact that uh, Traoré is kind of a, He's, he's a good man in the really uh, almost old-fashioned sense of the world. You know, he, he has a sense of what's wrong and what's right. But he's not the same, and he's not a hero who's going to change the world. That would have been pretty naive uh, for me to, do, to, to depict this kind of, of character, I think. But he is a hero, isn't he? He's constantly making right decisions, I think. In his, you know, in his... Yeah, he's, he's a, he's my, maybe he's a tragic hero in a sense, you know, he's a beautiful loser. 
Why, why, why is, I don't understand this concept. Why is he a loser anyway? Well, he's a loser in the sense that at the end he's get you know arrested and deported and he doesn't win his point. He's a loser in terms of the the fight that he engaged. Yeah, but he has his dignity. That's the main thing. Yes, exactly. So this is the, you know, this is the that's why he's beautiful. Stuff, right? That's why he's beautiful. You know, he, yeah, that's right. he keeps something really important: his dignity. Yeah. So we should look up to him. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <coughs> I have another question in this, in this same direction because it's at one point it seems so um, logical in the story and such a simple, I mean, it's a simple solution but very uh, almost revolutionary on this intimate scale that um, uh, that this uh, Fanny would pragmatically employ him as her babysitter. <laughs> For the, for the lodging, you know, I mean, in practical terms, it seems so, yeah, but she needs a babysitter and he's there and he doesn't have a job. And maybe, I don't know, do you think, I mean, that's, you know, as one of the possible versions, you know, this would really be kind of solidarity between him and her and so on. Would it uh, be too, look too cheap or, I don't know, to go in this direction? Because for me, it's kind of, you know, they're both in this capitalistic uh, situation yeah. and uh, all this stuff we are thinking, they are kind of atomized and everybody is struggling on its own path. But yeah. if there would be what Erwin as solidarity, you know, thinking about solidarity, there could be their very pragmatic solidarity <laughs> kind of solution. <laughs> I'm just wondering, you know. Well, I, I, frankly, I never thought about that. I have to be honest. Kari uh, <laughs> is a babysitter. Yes, the, the sequel. I think about it. <laughs> He's coming back, but uh, just the just the the you're 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 touching something. I mean, if I would have do that, I mean, Kari as the babysitter getting paid because he's unemployed and everything. Um, the element that came between the, that, that will have come between the two characters is the same. It's money, and all the relation, even when it's at its best, is finally based on money. You know, she don't have him at home because she, she's a generous person or whatever. She just needs the extra buck, and that's why she threw threw him out at the end finally. So yes, money would have been still element of their relation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. You, your film could be fil uh, filmed in English, but you you know you you, you we, we know just exactly that this is from Quebec. It's more Euro European. It's not the, the first film from Quebec I've, I've seen. Yeah. See, it's, it what it's, what it could be impossible even even these independent films in the United States or in this festival. But uh, but you usually usually know it's from Quebec. It, it, could, it could be in English in language. Because it's, uh, I don't know, more European, especially continental European. Yes. Um, yes, I, I'm, I, I don't know exactly what to answer to that, I have to say. It's just, uh, <coughs> you mean like the, the fact that it's Quebec film and it's, yes. because it's that, it's different of the average American independent yes. film? Well, yes, I like to think so. I like to think that in some in some way, there's something specific to Quebec. I know I don't like to think that. I know that. You know, I, I just feel it. I know it. And it's true that we we have this really strong European influence through, throughout. Well, our own history, our own culture, um, references, which is mainly French language or France and Europe and things like that. And it's true that uh, we also have like this large. European immigration, especially in Montreal, you know, Italian. You know. Um, so yeah, I think it. We we have this feeling. Also in Montreal, we have the chance to have a lot of um, international films coming in. So I guess uh, it it sort of forge a, a cultural reference that might be a bit different than the uh, mainstream American cinema. I would just like to say the ending also yeah. is great. Because for a moment you think, what are you going to do? Will you take the checks or not? But you know, the companies are buying the silence. Exactly. People, so it's only logical conclusion. And she, she has a little kid. She so needs the box. She needs the extra money. Box. And shut up. But that's, about the this way, that's, the, that's the way it goes, right? Yeah, it's the way it goes. I mean, mm -hmm. 
she cannot refuse those extra dollars, you know. That, and at the end, she's kind of coherent with herself, you know. She throw him out because of the money, so <coughs> now she got the money. What but, were the American dollars, not the Canadian? What? The, the film, you showed American dollars, not Canadian. <coughs> well, Canadian currency has some, some sort of no, no importance throughout yeah. the world, you know. It's American box or Euro, but, uh, just, you know, Canadian, Canadian money. I wouldn't travel with Canadian money, you know. <laughs> was it really about the box or was it because he lied to her? What? He, he lied and that's why that kind of creates the situation where she doesn't trust him and that's why. Well, that, that's, yeah, there's, a, there's an ambiguity <coughs> there that I really wanted to, to bring, you know. Because if I just make it about the money, of course I make her like a bitch, basically. Yeah. But having this break in the, this break in the trust in the, the relation that they, they were constructing, it allows me, it allows the character basically to, to be a bitch and yet being right at her own eyes, you know. That's tragic that he lied. Yes, and it's a small lie, you know, it's just, but yet it's a lie, and he's not the same, he's lying, you know, it's just. Uh, For me, it was not such a big deal, I mean, you know, I, I think she understood him at the end, no. I she understood his position, so that's the main, I know. In this kind of situation, he's trying to solve whatever he can. So he, he just didn't tell her the truth because he thought that maybe the, the solution will come, but mm -hmm. it didn't, unfortunately. No, I think you're right, sir. And at the end, I, I really like to believe that this very last scene where she's going back to the kind of uh, desk uh, where she get her check, I really li like to think, uh, that was my intention, so I like to think that it was on the screen too, uh, that she, some sort of, uh, it's almost sort of a coming of age scene, you know. She, mm -hmm. she understood something terribly, tragically. Yeah. She lost something. She lost somebody, basically, yeah. which is kind of a father figure or just probably the only trustable person that respect her in mm -hmm. what she is. She also matures, you know. Yes. We have two questions from the middle. You mean like people try to organize and things like that? Yes. Well, this is a question outside of the film because it's a really large question. Um, I think that we live in a time where solidarity is really, really low. Uh, each of us are kind of more and more, you know, uh, atomized and individualized. We're with a relation to the world. Even like in cinema, I mean, people <coughs> don't go to watch a film together no longer. They watch them at home on their iPad or on their TV. So we're sort of more and more alone. And those movements, those kind of uh, anti-Ni movement uh, throughout Europe, or what we had last spring in Quebec, like this big student insurgers, insurgent, insurgency, sorry. Um, I like to believe it's the, the beginning of something, but at the same time, I sort of realized that this is something uh, that's only happening in big town where this is some sort of cultural elite or, you know, student things. So outside, I, I don't know, I don't like, I'm not naive about those movements. I would love to, to think that there is something going on, but I think that there, there is something just uh, too small or too isolated or too confused maybe sometime, too romantic, I don't know. I don't know if it's a good answer. It's kind of such a big question. Uh, I believe uh, you, I will go back to this, let's say, relationship uh, thing. I believe you have made a very fine uh, uh, solution not to make her a bitch. Yeah. Uh, by in one of the last scenes, when she's coming there, to uh, his companion, the guy he, who indeed betrayed him. And uh, she was asking if he knows what's going on. This is definitely uh, a gesture that demonstrates that she cares. Yeah. That it was not only about money. 
But of course it was about money, but it was not only about money. Money was the rational part of this earth thing. Yes. Just and on the same time, I believe uh, it's, uh, it's, your movie is also great in, in this sense exactly because of this uh, uh, problem of being alone. Mm -hmm. And the fact that on one side we all depend <coughs> on <coughs> money, but at the same time the system that uh, is based on, on money uh, makes so diffi uh, so difficult of uh, to be in any sense in, uh, being together. Yes. And this movie is great, I believe, in this sense because it's not pathetic about that, and it's making a, a, it gives a little at least a sense of being together. Yes. Uh, of togetherness, and uh, in spite of that, the system works just on the contrary. So this is what it makes. It gives us a, a, a certain, let's say, uh, maybe romantic is too much. It's too heavy word. A positive, or let's say, you have you have feel that there are some positive uh, emotions that the people respect it, each other that they can trust each other at least to a certain degree. Yeah. And uh, so this is basically what I wanted to say. Yeah. And uh, maybe just to be, uh, because this week or last week, there was this great Italian writer here who has written the Solitudine di Nomi Primi. I believe you, you know the reference. Uh, how is how would be this in English? Uh, can somebody help me? <laughs> no, I don't know how to number the primi. How, how do you translate that, <laughs> that yeah. into English? First numbers, I don't know. Prime numbers. Prime numbers. Prime numbers, Prime numbers. Prime yes. Exactly. Thank Prime you numbers. so much. Okay. Yeah. And it's actually, of, it's actually speaking, uh, let's say, also partially about the same, uh, the, uh, the same problem, of, although, of course, in another culture, in the, in the middle class, in a middle class culture, mm -hmm. uh, but I believe it's a kind of, uh, uh, let's say, globalization of, let's say, afraid the globalization and, so, and solitudine are two parts of the same coin. Yeah, but we, we're all living in Western modern society, so I think we, we all sort of get the same feeling that things just sort of dissolving slowly. Um, maybe it's true, maybe it's not true, just time, you know, we'll, we'll see with time, but... Um, just to come back to your comment about this um, system and money and things like that, when I wrote the film, I make myself a point of having of uh, of uh, of writing a film where the darkness come from the system and not from the people. Again, to stay fair with my character, to say they are normal human being. You know, they can be bitch, they can be good, they can be both at the same time. And for me, it was kind of clear, and it's kind of clear in the world in general, that this, the system is kind of the, the dark machine, <laughs> blow, it, blow everything up, you know, everything's out. It's just, uh, and it, it's, it's strange in a sense, because there, there's, it's like it's, it's a big system where nobody's in command, you know, it's just like a big machine that's working in its own logic. So, yeah. Great. I have a question. Uh, how come you decided the main character would be held by a African guy. Why not somebody of the other five sailors? Um, this one's probably in most of most of all an aesthetic choice. I have to say, <laughs> it was clear for me that it had to be a foreigner, a foreigner that you basically look at uh, as him as a foreigner. Um, it's true also that I want really wanted to avoid like the whole Muslim issue, not getting into that. N not because I'm scared or whatever. It's just that it was kind of obvious, you know. You make a film with foreigners after uh, after 9/11. If you put a Muslim on that, there's all already this connotation, this meaning. So it was kind of important for me to have it like is a Christian. You know, black guys are Christian too. So. Um, and um, I uh, I cast this guy. I think I saw this beautiful picture of a Canadian artist, and I I really forgot his name. Whatever. 
uh, it was basically a, a series of portraits of black men on the snow. And it was really, really beautiful. I mean, it's kind of obvious, the contrast, the black skin, white snow, and everything. But it was somehow gorgeous and inspiring. And I just went through this process of casting. And Isaka came really, really, really early in the process. Uh, my producer told me about this actor that he saw in the film, and he didn't remember the name of the the actor or the name of the, the title of the film. So for two years, we were looking for this short Belgian film with this black guy, and we never find it. Uh, until the day we were in Rotterdam, the film festival, at the cinema co-production market, and this uh, Belgian producer come to us saying, I love your project, I want to be part of it, and but I have somebody that I can suggest, and she show us the, a film that she just finished with uh, Isaka, so he came in at this moment. It was the guy we were looking for two years, by the way. <laughs> Any more comments or questions? Insult, yeah. whatever. <laughs> uh, but so uh, I went with the one of your remarks after the projection at Mazzioli, mm -hmm. where you said you were not sure whether you were happy with the reaction of the audience. And I didn't understand at the time what did you expect. I mean, it's not a movie where the people go out cheering. Of course, I know that. <laughs> it's just that it's hard to read an audience after a film and to have those meetings, those Q&A, even if people I, you know, you're a good audience because sometimes people are more, quite more hostile about the film, you know, for some reason, whatever, the weather outside, the whatever. <laughs> but it's just good to talk with the people like that and to sort of have a sense of uh, what they see in the film and everything. For me, it's really reassuring. It's really giving me the impression that I've done my job almost correctly. And, you know, it just... So it's, it was hard for me to be sit there in the Manzolini Square and having the film ending and just people walk out. It's just like, well, okay, uh, you know, we're sensitive animals to make. Uh, so <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time and being with us. From whatever I heard about the movie, it's one of the two or three movies on the festival that really made an impression. It didn't make the audience necessarily happy. I mean, that was not the uh, intense thing. <laughs> Yeah, that was that uh, the intention, you know. It's Europe. It's Europe. <laughs> <laughs> Not uh, South of Canada. Yeah. But satisfied. I hope so. I hope so. Thank you very so, much. Thank you again. Thank you for coming. Again.